That's pretty good. Tennessee Mike in my uh, one of my messenger chats reminded me that it's 8 o'clock. And a few other things going on, so I was a little late to get started on this. All right. See if people chime in, and then we'll get rolling. See what people have questions, all that good stuff. We can talk, do whatever, because I don't really have any main topic. There's Tennessee Mike. There's Bobby Legs. Enrique, Bruce is here, Craig, Matthew, Wilson. Wow. Yeah, this Monday kind of snuck up on me, guys. Rock the watches here. What is up? Eric Eric says morning. I don't know where you're at. Morning, huh? What them pats? Oh, you know what? I didn't... Guys, I was so busy this last weekend, I didn't even realize it was Super Bowl Sunday. I didn't watch the game or nothing, so... Rob, monsters for sale. No, I have no Seiko monsters for sale. Mark says, do you think the Omega Seamaster is the Submariner? Uh, kind of. I mean, you could probably break it down so that kind of is, basically. Uh, let's see. Slicey Dicey's here. Yeah, looks like 50... Oh yeah, man, already over 50 people tuned in real quick. I guess I do my lives on Monday, so you guys are used to it. So that I typically get the regulars and then maybe some people that want to chime in that have missed or something like that wrist check if you guys want to sound off in the comments with what you're wearing i am currently wearing my absolute toughness g-shock square i wear this all day at work today it's crazy cold and i work outside so i kind of needed the g-shock square today wilson's wearing a patty monster that's cool Craig's wearing his new Orisakos Hulk. That's awesome. Helson Bling Master. Tennessee Mike's wearing the Bling Master. We got a khaki out there. Some Islanders. Zen 104. A lot of awesome watches. Oh, man. Guys, I am like crazy behind on videos, too. And I've been straight up, I've been kind of slacking. I straight up have been slacking. And I need to get back at it i at least have to make two videos a day so tomorrow um i'll probably make two or three or four or something i'm gonna have to get cranking on these videos mark is asking what is my favorite hamilton it's a good question there's a lot of hamiltons i like out there um i don't know if i could pick a one favorite i do like the khaki king um you know, the, the one Hamilton that keeps calling to me, though, and I've had it on the show, but I've never owned one, is the uh, Cr Chronomatic. Is that the one? Is that right? Um, I think I had the blue dial one on the show, the chronograph with the Vajoo 7750 in it, or the ver new version of it. But um, I kind of want the, I want to see the white dial one, so I might see that. Hey, Bruce is in the comments, Bruce Williams. So, yeah, Intramatic, thank you. Bongo. Yeah, I kind of like that one. I don't know if that's my favorite necessarily, Hamilton, but um, I would say favorite maybe is some of the khaki uh, titanium 42 millimeter maybe could be a favorite. Uh, let's see. We are the road crew. Yeah, we have... Uh, Pretty different. Hey, uh, check this out. I want to share this because I, I have a few watches out on the table, but I just opened a package that I've, I've actually had in here and I haven't even done the unboxing, which I'm, I'm basically not going to do an unboxing video, but you guys know anything about this brand? Er, was it Ernst, Ernest Benz? Benz? I'm, I'm butchering the name, I'm sure, but is that not a very cool looking watch for a chronograph? That Actually, all three of these are chronographs. They sent over a hell of a package, guys. They sent over, like, a bunch of swag. They sent over these three watches, and they look extremely well-built. So. I like the cathedral handsets on these. These are just beautiful-looking watches. This one's obviously on the bigger side of things, but there's probably a lot of people that um, could rock this larger watch. I, 
I know my brother-in-law definitely could. He's got like eight and a half inch wrist, but you need a longer strap, I think, for this size watch. Let's pop it on wrist. I want to see what it looks like on my seven and a quarter. It's a big, it's a big watch, no doubt about it. So I got to get the video going on these. Yeah, that's if if you like big watches, uh, you would definitely like this watch. I mean, it wears fine on wrist. Like I could wear this, I wouldn't. It's just bigger than what I typically like. But um, I could see someone that really liked the larger watches and wanted a quality watch. I could see someone rocking this. It's got some complications. It's got some bold colors, but it's still done tastefully. I'm probably a little more drawn to these two white dial ones. Oh man, the gold! Look at the gold when the light catches it. That is very good. Yeah, design. These are. This was all organized uh, by Chris over at the Watch Lounge. He organized this uh, arrangement. So, but check it out: pointer date, chronograph, uh, a lunar complication, a day, a month. I mean, this thing is complicated as heck. This has everything. This is crazy. Wow. I have not messed with automatic watches with that level of complication. I am I am not worthy. I'm not suited to, to manage that level of watch, I don't think. But I'm going to do my best. Um we'll see we'll see what I can do uh when I do the video, but hopefully I'll get that uh, I need to get these videos done like as soon as I can and then and then get them posted and everything, but uh, let's see, Rob, what do you think about S Stevrol? I don't know anything about that brand, to be honest with you. Uh, AZ Clayton says it's like a cross between an IWC and an Oris. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. It's kind of like a, it's got that Oris vibe with a cathedral handset, like, and then it's got the pointer date, and, uh, but then it has like an IWC, like, pilot, so. Uh, let's see. I have another package, and I... I Probably not going to post up a unboxing video on it, so I figured I'd just unbox it here with you guys. I did purchase... I didn't realize it was made in China. But that's fine. Um, I purchased this watch. It's a watch. Knife. This is a knife. So I picked this one up from... All the knife All the knife guys out there will, will know um, Blade HQ. This is a honey badger. Don't care. So I picked this up off from Blade HQ, and this is a limited, I just got to make sure there's no personal information here. This is a limited edition knife through another YouTuber that I've followed for a long time. He goes by the name of Nut and Fancy. So I followed him for a long time, and he'll occasionally put out like these um, limited edition knife releases. And they usually like go up in value. And this is a flipper, stonewash, kind of, you know, white color. So I was definitely interested in checking it out. For one, I like flippers, and it's kind of like a zero uh, loss proposition. When you pick up one of his blades, you can see it's actually labeled and numbered. It says TNP, that stands for the Nut and Fancy Project, um, 02 of 2021. And this is number 41 of however many they make. I don't even know how many they're making, but... Ooh, nice action. See, and I'm, I like the flippers. Oh, it's D2. See, I might even keep this one. That's like my my perfect favorite size blade, like the way it feels in hand. It's crazy light. This stuff is light as heck. It does have a milled out liner inside. I like the drop point blade design and stone washed like that. Nice jimping up there. I don't know. Pretty Pretty fun blade. And it's called a honey badger, so I think that's kind of funny. I don't know. That's a that's a cool knife. Don't get into knives, guys. You know, most of the knives knife guys will tell you don't get into watches. Well, the exact opposite happens when you're in the watch hobby. Guys will start to maybe migrate towards knives if they weren't already into them. And the knife guys will tell the watch guys don't get into knives because even... Even if you're doing like what I'm doing, where I try to buy the affordable stuff, um, it uh, it gets ridiculous pretty quick. So you have to be careful with that. 
Let's see. Design says slicey dicey. Yeah, I'm thinking of making design videos about knives. Oh man, design that would be cool if you did, because you go like you go pretty in depth with it and stuff like that. I'd love to help you out if you want to borrow a watch or a knife or something like that to help out with your videos. Your videos are awesome. So uh, let's see. Floridians here. Yeah, see, Rock the Watch has a bunch of pocket knives. And I honestly, I I love this size blade and stuff like that. I don't carry them a ton. I really only typically carry like uh, the 58 millimeter Swiss Army knives. So yeah, flashlights are addictive, but yeah, I don't know. I think you probably could have. I mean, but look, so for for example, here's here's some knives. Like here's three that I've bought, right? So they're all flippers. Um, and they are all about the same size. So you can see I definitely have a category that I like. And they're all affordable. So like people are asking if I like Reeves or anything like that. Um, yeah, I'm sure they're awesome knives. I don't go that price level. You know, these are the stuff that I gravitate toward is the affordable flippers. So, and then like this was a gift from my buddy Dirk. And then this was a gift from my buddy Bruce. So... And even that, they kind of followed, like, Bruce knew what I liked. I like flippers, and I like affordable about this size. So that's what he picked up for me. And the same thing with this one. Yeah, Rock the Watch uh, says uh, Zero Tolerance Rocks. I definitely want to check out a Zero Tolerance at some point. I do like um, Ken Onion Designs, and I think he's done some stuff for Zero Tolerance. I can't remember if he has or not. All right. Let's get back to some watches. Stefan is asking, is the A15 a quartz? I don't know what the A15 is. Uh, let's see. Brits. Can anyone tell me what the Belova is giving away there? Oh, I don't I don't know what uh, anything about that. Watch. Let's see, zero times times like this. Yeah, Nefarian has a Ken Onion Kershaw. I think I have a couple. Um, actually, I, I really liked some of the the blades that I, I don't think he did this one. I can't remember uh, when he was working with um, this isn't one, but when he was working with CRKT, Ken Onion actually did some really cool knives too. Uh, Eric is asking, will I be getting in the in-house Damasco soon? I hope so. Uh, I, I'm not going to go buy one, but if, if somebody if somebody uh, picks one up and offers to loan it in, that'd be great. So, we'll see. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to catch some questions here. Richard, do I have any swords? Um, no, I have some large blades, but I don't... They're definitely not swords. More of a machete. Uh, let's see. Have you looked at the Victorinox with the ETA movement? I'm not sure which one you're referring to, but I do have this one in, and I do need to do the video on it. So I do have the Victorinox or Victorinox Inox with the, uh, I believe that's an ETA movement. Does it say 26 joules? So if it has 26 joules, that's probably going to be the uh, Salida movement. I'll have to get some good optics and get up in there and see if I can see the part number. But 25 joules is going to be the ETA 2824. And then this one's probably going to be the SW200 with a date. So because of the 26 joules. But All right. Oh, the Floridian. What is the light green? Floridian wants to know what this is. This is the, again, I need to do the video on these. I'm so bad, guys. This is the the current generation of the Trasca Free Diver in the mint dial, which like kind of is like I don't want to say it's their calling card, but um, it's definitely recognizable in the Trasca lineup. So, and then they have their proprietary scratch resistance. I'm noticing right now some of the differences. They went with a different case shape than the previous Free Diver. This one's got more of a round to it, more of a belly to it. And it's still going to be super scratch resistant. So nice oversized crown. These are some legit good uh, value watches right there for sure. Anybody that has one of those and has used it under hard use can uh, um, agree with me on this that it is extremely scratch resistant. So it's very cool that they offer that. 
yeah, the case, I, I really like this new case design. You can kind of see it. When I do the close-ups on the full video, they, they definitely bellied it, rounded it out a little bit, have a nice polished relief. And that still shines through even with the uh, coating that they put on it. The bracelet is all individual linked, so it's going to be super um, comfortable and everything. Nice bezel action. I don't really see any complaints with this. Maybe if we'll see what movement they use. Let's let's pop the crown. Nice move. Oh, they didn't even they use the right movement too, guys. Meaning that there's no uh, ghost or phantom ghost uh, date position. So they used a no date movement. So I'm assuming. Yeah, it's a Miyota. So this would be the 90S5, I think is what they call it. Did you write it on the back? No. This might actually be a prototype because it's X'd out for the uh, serial number on it too. So that's a prototype or a, a sample watch. Let's see. Got a bolder adventure on the way. Trosca looks amazing. Uh, Nefarian, no, it's not a Seiko movement, actually, kind of, thankfully. It's actually the Miyota 9. It should be a 90S5, I think is what they call it. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so they'll, they'll make some noise because the, the rotor system or the winding, automatic winding system on the Miyotas, when it spins, it only winds in one direction. So the other direction is kind of like free spinning. So when you get that fast rotor spin and that wobble, that's in the free spin uh, direction. The other direction of that rotor will be the winding direction. Uh, see, Sir Flux says, hey Rob, just picked up the Tag Heuer Octavia. Really like it so far, that's awesome, that's a cool watch. Chris says, uh, hey, do you have any advice for me for investing in G-Shocks? Are they limited edition? So investing in G-Shock can be, you can, it can be calculated, but it can also be kind of, I don't even want to say risky, but if you want to make your, your best investments are going to be like, for example, like good power watches, like this initial D G-Shock Square, that one's going to do well. Most G-Shock Frogmen, if you buy them at, you know, entry level or introductory price at just regular retail, I think you'll do okay on the most Frogmen of the uh, digital ones. I don't know about the analog. We'll see what the analog ones do. But the digital ones for sure. G-Shock Squares, sometimes it's not just limited ones. Sometimes it's just regular release ones that people sleep on and then they catch later. Sometimes those ones go up and you can get them in the more affordable range. For example, I'm not saying this one will do that, but what I'm saying is um, this might be one that, you know, depending on what was released in the same time that like, a model like this was released, that maybe people didn't pay attention to this one and they focused on other watches. And then this one went it like it came on the scene and went and it's no longer in production um and then that's when it becomes like collectible and the price starts to go up on it when the supply and demand crosses paths so um, I, like i got i'm not saying this one will do that but i'm just saying that's some of the, the trends you have to look for uh where's the best place to buy a boulder you can buy boulder watches used at gray market they usually take a pretty good hit but you can typically just buy them brand new right on their website they do sales occasionally too let's see best seiko prospects uh igor's asking i kind of like the new tuna <laughs> okay some of these comments uh, oh, Watch Gauge picked up Boulder, I guess. I haven't talked to um, John about that, but. Uh, yes, design has a good point. Um, I forgot about the Cassiokes. Some of these Cassiokes are going to come and go real quick because they're, it's still a, a newer watch and they're testing a lot of things. So you're going to see certain models, they're going to like come out and then they're just not going to sell good. So they kind of pull back on production and then, and then they're gone. And then people come into the game later and they're like, well, I want all the Cassiokes. So then they have to pay a premium to buy some of those earlier models. 
So Cassie Oaks would be a good one to probably buy just about every single model that comes out. And we haven't even had, as far as I know, we haven't had any limited edition Cassie Oaks yet. Like special editions, yeah. So as we'll, soon as those start happening, those are really going to blow up. Our, MJ says, are all watch and wound watches limited production? I'm not sure. Uh, Sunset, good question. He says, uh, I have a question about my Seiko Tuna. I'm assuming the quartz tuna. I actually have three quartz watches that are on sync, but one tends to fall behind after a month. Is is this uh, constant? So even quartz watches, like the the tuna movement, the 7C46, I'm actually dealing with an issue with one right now. I actually need to get that mailed out to Bruce. But uh, my giveaway watch for my founders group was a like new SBBN 031 or 33, 33 I think. And I sent it in to have the sapphire done, crystal done, and that was a bust that's the wrong size. But uh, the watchmaker was testing the watch and found that the 7C46 movement in the tuna is not performing correctly. It was actually running slow. There's some sort of, he can't tell what because he's not going to take it apart because it should be under warranty. But there's some sort of interference in the mechanical parts of the quartz watch inside. There's something wrong. So it's either going to need a full movement or a service or something that's going to go back to Seiko and hopefully they can do that for me. So the Seiko 7C46 movement is an awesome movement, but it still has mechanical bits and it can still break. Let's see. Mark, why do watch guys seem to like knives and multi-tools? Because we use our watches as tools and I don't know. Uh, let's see. Is the honeymoon over for the Breitling? What are your thoughts after a couple of weeks? Uh, how long have I owned it? I've owned it since I think I picked it up when I got back from vacation at Christmas. So I've owned it for over a month. Um, no, it's the Breitling's keeper status. Uh, is the honeymoon over? Yeah, I think the honeymoon's over. I don't feel like I have to wear it. Um, I feel like I want to wear it. Like this last weekend, I went on a little trip and I pretty much just wore um, the, I took one watch. I was only gone for one night, but I was gone for two days, one night. I took one watch and I took my Omega Seamaster, the white dial one that I have. So, and I just wore that all the time. Uh, it was a toss up. I almost took this one, but I really hadn't worn the Seamaster a ton because when I came back from my last vacation, I wore this guy. So, uh, but yeah, I'll be wearing this again here soon. I'm actually, I've been kind of selling a few watches here and there. So uh, when I, when I do that, it'll bring down the collection and then I can wear, you know, the watches that I really want to wear, like the Breitling or, I mean, sometimes I just want to wear a G-Shock Square like this. And I, I kind of don't ever feel the the time, I don't feel like I have the time to do it. I know it sounds messed up, right? But, um, cause it's a G-Shock Square, but I never make them a priority because they're not really special, right? But even like the initial D one, well, I don't want to just own it to own it, to have it. I want to wear it. So I have to probably remove some distractions, some watches as distractions and make the time to wear some of these other ones. Kevin asked, how many white dial watches do I currently own? Uh, three. I think I have three. One of them is upstairs. So I have the Seamasters upstairs, and then I have the Breitling, and then I have the Visitor. I did have the Laco, but I actually sold the Laco. So I need to ship that out, too. Again, guys, <laughs> see a pattern here? I need to ship this. I need to video that. I need to send this. I need to wear that. Yeah. I'm like uh, super far behind on a lot of things, but I'll catch up. Uh, let's see, Mike says, which glycine combat sub would you buy? Hmm, I don't know. I'd have to look at them again. Oh, the Orient Star. I did have that too, J-Rod, and I sold that. I forgot about that. So I got more watch cases behind me, but I was just going to go off memory. Uh, 
any day now there'll be a Hodinkee travel clock on the table. I doubt it. Uh, Sands of Time says, best moon phase watch under 2000. I don't, uh, I don't know. I don't know much about the, the complications of watches and the price points of them. Let's see, 1991 says, hey Rob, any update to opening up for sub, the co-founders groups? So good question with the co-founders. My founders group is at like 98 or 99. I have to count that again. And then the co-founder group is at, I think I'm at like 18 on that. I'm, I'm kind of hesitant to even open it up. I know that sounds messed up, right? But, um, cause it ends up being a lot of work and I don't need more work. I need less work. So I probably could do more co-founders, but it has to be the right people. It have to be people that can just integrate and work within the group dynamic that's already existing and not be upset any sort of balance. So as soon as any sort of balance is upset, then I have to remove that person. So then it becomes work. So um, let's see. I'll try to read a couple of questions here. Mark is asking, which, in your opinion, is the better watch, your Seamaster or the Breitling? Well, I think they coexist, first of all. I think they actually do coexist. And I don't have, the Seamaster's upstairs. I'm not going to go get it. But um, So two, a few things. Wrist size, if you have a smaller wrist, then the 42 millimeter Breitling is going to wear way better on wrist than the Seamaster. It just wears and feels smaller on wrist. Um, Price-wise, you can get these for easily $1,000 less than the Seamaster. So, again, if your wrist size is a little bit smaller, the, the Breitling is going to wear better. And if your budget is a little bit smaller, the Breitling is going to be more affordable. So, but if your wrist is a little bit bigger and your budget is a little bit bigger, then the Seamaster uses better materials, has a better better uh, m movement, construction, um, specs. It has better specs, you know. Uh, but the Breitling's no slouch either because this is a worked-over ETA uh, movement that is COSC. So it's no slouch when it comes to specs. It's going to be a performer. It's just not going to have that crazy anti-magnetism. And then the Metas certification is, like, pretty nuts where it's just – the Seamaster will run great even with low power, any angle, any condition. Like it just performs all the time, nonstop. So is one better than the other? I mean, technically the Seamaster is better, but it also costs more and it's a little bit bigger on wrist. So there's a lot of things to, you, you almost have to make like a pros and cons list or something or what's going to work best for you. They, for me, they coexist. Like I, I, can't see owning I wouldn't let either one go uh, Evan says is the Seiko SARX 055 still worth it for 1200 I'm not sure what those are trending at to be honest with you that's that's a lot of money I know I just spent fourteen hundred dollars on a Seiko tuna and, and I know what I'm about to say is going to sound messed up but I feel like twelve hundred dollars for a SARX is just seems like a lot of money. Mr. Sack says, any thoughts on the Zen 105? I want to see a Zen 105. I want to see a couple of them. I want to see the UTC. I want to see the uh, the other one with the day date on the, you know, the six o'clock going downward. I want to see both of them. I don't want to buy them though. So I want to see someone send those in for me to check out. I don't, but I think they're great watches. I think what's happening now with Zen, though, because you remember not too long ago, the Zin, like the Zen 104, you pretty much had to get on a wait list to get them because they were always sold out. And now there's so many different colorways, and then they have the 105. So um, I think you can I think you can regularly just pick up a Zen almost. MJ says, yeah, true statement, MJ. Seiko price is going up, but not their quality. Yeah, that's pretty much true. Uh, El Boogie says, uh, what about the Zen Easy M, Rob? I don't think I checked that one out, but that is a crazy baller watch. That is an awesome watch. 
Uh, Nicholas is asking, how many watches do you have, Rob? I, I don't know how many I have, but it's more than I think, and it's less than you think. Uh, Rob, thoughts on the Oris? Uh, the, what is that? Carries Fort Reef? Is that, is that that um kind of white dialed pointer date one? Or is that a different one? I haven't kept up on those. I do need to pick out a couple more Oris watches to have Oris sent over. They just emailed me, so I need to email them back and uh, see if they can send over a couple more watches. Right? Because I have time to video them. But as long as they're going to keep saying, hey, would you like to check out this? I'm going to say, yes, I would. Send it over. Slicey dicey. Yep. Never count. Um, I could count, but... Honestly, they, they come and go so quick that uh, I don't know that I would, that count wouldn't be accurate anyway. Uh, Engineer Wannabe says the, uh, it's the blue dial GMT is the carries for it. I, I don't know. I'd have to look that one up. If that's one they could send over, if you guys want to see it, if uh, I can ask them if they can send it over for me to do a video on. Uh, can we get a look at the Willard on the table? Yes, it is not. It's not an actual Seiko Willard. This is the steel dive. Uh, what is it called? I think it's called like a SD 1970 or something like that. I can't remember if that's what they actually call it. I was wearing it too, so it's a little gummed up, but this watch is running good. It's super comfortable. It feels a lot like the actual Seiko Willard, but you can pick these things up for like 135 bucks. And listen, I'm usually not the guy that says, I'm totally fine with homage watches. I don't have a problem with it. I typically don't gravitate toward them, like meaning that I don't really want them or own them or anything like that. But for $135, I kind of don't really see the reason to buy the actual Seiko Willard. For me, anyway. Not until we know that their quality control is going to be better. Uh, let's see. What kind of movement is in this? This should be an NH35. And like the bezel action is really good on it. Things line up. I mean, the ceramic bezel insert in this is like starting to push up right here. But I don't know. I don't. That's not a deal breaker for 135 bucks. I know I missed a lot of questions, guys. I can't see them all. Let's see. What movement? Oh, let's see on H35. Blue dial. Congrats. Oh, I think somebody wanted to see this. This is a... Um, I need to do the video on this too, but this is actually going to go out on a tour watch in my uh, founders group. But this is a... I think it's a Surge or Sergey. I can't remember if that's what it is. I think it's Surge. Check it out. It comes in this like crazy... like I think that's oak. Like a nice wood box. It, so anybody like into woodworking? That's oak, right? Comes with the little tools. It's the Model 1. He's a knife maker, this guy. And then he uh, came out with this watch. So, and he wanted to do something different. Well, he nailed different. But it's like it's all stone washed, kind of like how the, you know, the blades are on some watch or on knives. I'm going to keep screwing up. I mean, applied indices, they stand up like little cylinders. It's a very cool watch. Check out the seconds hand. The lollipop on the seconds hand, like, lines up with the indices. This is a, this is a legit nice build of a watch. And it's not crazy big either, so... Because you, you can't make square watches too big. They'll look funky. Yeah. So, and it, Justin, Justin EDC says his knives are the same way. They're kind of like steampunk vibe. And I think he even has some, like, tools and stuff like that, too, that go along with uh, the whole lineup of that style of build. Uh, let's see. It, Brent says, does anybody have the Zelos black tip? I have one here, but it's, it's behind me, so. Uh, Rob... Your preferred Melanie strap. I was just talking to some people about the Melanie straps. I need to order up the. I need to order up a stabe. I've never really. Tr oh, no, that's not true. I did try one because I tried Bruce's. I need to order a stabe and just have it here, 
so I can um, try it out because I'm, I'm a big fan of the Melanie's. Like, this is a Victorinox uh, mesh on a Citizen watch, and I just, it's very jewelry-like, and it's very comfortable. This one doesn't, like, drape as much as some have, but I need to order, like, the Strapco one, and I need to order the uh, Stabe. I think that'd be, I don't know if Watch Gecko has any. Uh, let's see. Chrono Craze wants to know what size is the Helson, Helson Shark Diver. This is the 40 millimeter. And then this one actually has the ETA 2824 in it. So this is a pretty desirable one for sure. And it's I threw it on the time grapher. It's running spot on. So, I mean, it's not running right now, but when I tested it earlier. So, nice bracelet on this. And this one's worn. It's got a few marks and everything like that, but it's still in really good shape. Uh, so yeah, Watch Gecko does have a Melanie. So I, I need to check out theirs. I need to check out Strap Code, and I want to order a Stabe. So does so anyone have a Stabe? They're worth the money. Um, yes, I think the the Stabes are worth the money. I think that's probably there might be more expensive mesh bracelets out there, but that's probably like the the really good one for you know more money. So. Yeah, I think a lot of people, we all kind of talk about selling and purging watches, but then we end up, we'll sell like three and then we'll go buy two. So it's like, a, what do you call it? Two steps forward, one step back. Um, and then at some point, then we'll end up picking up a couple cheap watches or something. Um, I do it. I'm super bad with it. Like I picked up both these citizens, you know, I keep buying G-Shock squares, you know, even when like the Helsing gets sent in, I have to have time to buy it. Um whatever i don't know there's more i don't even know there's more watches but you know i'm running a a youtube channel on watches that i've said this before guys like what i do here on this channel is not reality this is like totally fantasy world where i'm posting up a watch video every day and i'm just surrounded by watches filling this room that's not normal you know don't don't ever feel like you need to try to do something like that that's Pretty ridiculous. Borderline insane. Oh, yeah. See, Brent says, My wife, oddly enough, bought me a larger watch box. Did not help the situation. So, you know, you're supported, uh, you know, or encouraged to buy more watches from your friends, your peers, and then sometimes at home, uh, maybe your spouse sees the joy that it brings you, that how in depth you've immersed into the hobby, and that's that's a a good spouse, right? That wants to support you in that venture. They're like, hey, listen, he really likes watches. He's having a ball. He's having fun. They want to support that. So, yeah, just go for it, man. Uh, let's see. Nefarian says, just think you could have all of these watches, including the SM and Breitling or one Daytona. I don't even, I don't like chronograph. I don't want to say I don't like chronographs because I like chronographs, but like everyone's gaga over like the Daytona or the Speedmaster stuff. I think they're great looking watches, but I don't want one. I have zero desire for it. Oh my God. Hopefully that's covered under warranty. That was a soft drop, guys. Don't tell anybody. Don't tell them I dropped their watch. So, yeah. Like, this chronograph is pretty cool. It's not overly thick. I mean, it is thick because it's an automatic chronograph, but I love that color and stuff. Let's see. Yeah, I don't know. I'd have to maybe go a little bit larger. I think for how thick it is, maybe it's too small. I'd probably have to go with this white one. Yep, I'd have to go with this size. I was drawn to that smaller one, but honestly, if I were going to pick one of these up, I'd have to go with this case size. So, 
But again, I'm not, I'm not going to go buy a chronograph. If they, I, I do have a couple of those uh, watch pads. But this is, my desk is, it's pine, guys. It's actually really soft. It, this, and then the uh, urethane that I put on it is uh, water-based and it's soft. Like this, my desk does not scratch watches. I think I could wear this. I wonder if they'll give it to me. <laughs> I think these watches are actually pretty dang expensive. I doubt they're going to give this to me. I wouldn't even know how to set this thing up. Do any of you guys have any like crazy complicated watches like this? Like there's a lot going on. So it's running. So I'm guessing there's two time zones. Is that another time zone? You have the moon phase. You have your... What are we looking at here? You have your pointer date, and then you have the day of the week and the month. And then it's a chronograph. That's a lot going on. I'll have to figure out how to set it. Just press stuff and see what happens. I don't want to break it. I think I signed something from this company that if I break their watches, I'm liable. We can at least start the chronograph. Chrono Craze had the, the exact same movement, but in a different watch. I mean, this thing is straight up beautiful. Like, they didn't screw anything up. Beautiful applied indices. If you look at the Arabics all the way around, none of them are interrupted. This That's what I mean. This is like the correct size dial for this complication. Nothing is interrupting anything else. Everything has its place. Perfect. Yeah, I think I like that one. This one's a little bit too big and this one's a little bit too small. I think that one's just right. It's perfect. Yeah, that is a really nice piece. This company just emailed me. Uh, was it Relio? I don't even know how to say it. Um, pretty cool watch. Kind of reminds me of like a Orion, but with a little more pizzazz to the case. That's kind of what it reminds me of, but with a nice H-link. They emailed me and were like, hey, are you going to post that video soon? I'm like, ah, oh, crap. I need to get, <laughs> I need to start making some more videos. Yeah, this one's got a really nice, almost like a ruby red color to it. It's a deep ruby. But it's a screw down crown. I mean, check out the indices on this thing too. Like they're, they're chamfered off like to keep like the, I don't know how to explain it. But I usually don't see them done like that. I'll have to look up to see why they did that. Because they're not just regular shaped indices. And then it has a nice display case back. And that is a Miona movement with a custom rotor. Yep, you can get a little bit of that rotor wobble. But screw down crown and all that stuff too, and a nice taper on the H link. Uh, yeah, it should be sapphire crystal too on that. Uh, no, it should be, it's a Miyota something. I, I'm, let me see if it's a no date. Yeah, so it's it's probably the same movement that Trosco used. It's a, it should be a 90, or not, yeah, 90S5 would be the no date, 4 hertz. Pretty simple operation. It's going to run at uh, 4 hertz beat rate. Or, yeah, or Mike says it could be the 9039. I don't know what the difference is. There's a couple different movements they use for the no date. All right, good luck with that, Chris. Uh, yeah, Nefarian, it's, I don't know how to say that, right? It's R-E-L-I-O. I'm not really sure how to say that. And it's a Solstice is the brand. It should be the, uh, it's the Miota movement, J-Rod, on this one. So it's going to be a nine zero. It's going to be a nine zero three nine, or it's going to be a nine zero S five. So I don't know if I can find it in there or not. Uh, let's see, Jesse Park says, "Love white dial watches like you." Just picked up the Swordfish forty in the uh, Frost dial. Thoughts? 
I think that's a great watch. The Swordfish is awesome. I personally like the 42 millimeter, but the 40, if your wrist is going to work um, good, then it's going to be best for you. Kevin, thanks for looking that up. It says it's the 9039. So I don't know what movements. Um, I was seeing a lot of the 90S5s in a lot of different watches, so I'm not sure what that was in. Yes, this is a Damasco. This is the first person that's asked about it that I've noticed. Yeah, I think this is a uh, D... DA37. It's got a full loom dial, day date, fully blacked out sword handset and the printing on it and stuff. And this should be the tagamented uh, case and everything. So yeah, DA37. So just a beautiful watch. This was sent in by Art and he sent it over to a couple people for video. And now it's my turn. So I think Kevin had it last. I can't remember. Yeah, these German watches, man. Wow. And then this, the strap that Damasco uses for these watches are is just, it's magic. It's very comfortable. It's a little tricky at first to figure out how to get this threaded through with this little protector flap here. So this little flap underneath kind of keeps the, um, the metal from the buckle away from your skin. See that? So that's kind of cool, but really nice supple leather and it has a nice taper to it and it's flat so just a a great watch and it glows it just glows so good on the dial yeah the the full matte black out hand set on this when you do the i'll do a loom when i close out the video or whatever i'll kill the lights and you can look at the loom but this thing's gonna glow awesome and they kind of tucked the day date down here so it didn't really upset the balance of the dial or anything um, I could go without a day or date. I don't know if they have that option or not, but I think the more watches I have and the more watches I wear, I'm fine with no date. It's just one more complication I have to set, and I usually just do quick sets on my watches. Loom it up. Yeah, I'll, I'll do the loom at the very end. Uh, Chaz from the Berg says that's a... Die model strap is who makes that and then that's who uh damasco brands it so you could probably buy that separately then i mean it says damasco on it but yeah this, those are really nice leather straps if you can pick those up from uh, the maker and put them on other watches i would be tempted to do so okay so chrono craze is is gonna let's talk me out of movements here so we got the 90S5 appears to be the same no date as the 9035 or 39, I think it is. The no date of the 9015. I have no idea why the difference is. Maybe it's just two different markets or something. I don't know. I'll have to look into it at some point. Oh, it's Chaz is saying it's waterproof leather too. Mm, interesting. Oh, Nefarian says the 90S5 is the more premium version, so it'd be like an elaborate grade or something. Interesting. Let's see here. Who said that? Uh, GTT Windcam says he bought a Seiko Monster SRP311 after watching your list of monsters. Nice pickup. That is a cool model. You're going to start seeing less and less of those Seiko monsters out there because they've moved on to, you know, like the fourth gen monsters like this. Yeah, you know, the third gen, the, the 309s back there. That's a giveaway watch when, um, I've said this before, you know, my last, last week's live stream ended up getting deleted because of a complication with the finishing or whatever upload on YouTube. But I probably said it there, but that watch here, this exact watch, I picked up off from my buddy Craig, which is like a like new condition SRP 309. And then it has um, a sapphire crystal installed in it. This watch I'm going to give away on the channel when my subscriber count hits 50,000. So this will be a random rob 50,000 subscriber giveaway watch. And it is like one of the cleanest i mean there's a couple little marks on the class but it's it's a very clean srp 309 with a sapphire 
uh, clear AR coating crystal. Uh, Jacob says, I bought a J model SRP309 because of you. Yeah, good pickup. Yeah, the, the uh, domed, I think I showed this before on the two monsters. So if you, Floridian says, go ahead and ship it to you. Um, so if you look at them, of course, mine's on the left. And I don't know if you guys can see this, but my naked eye, my, my vision, I can see it. But so my old one from 2014 on the left with no X on the dial. This one has the Prospex X. So this is a newer model. Um, my dial's faded. This one's not. This is a nice, brilliant, deep orange. Um, and then take a, the, the big difference of the hard lex versus a sapphire with AR coating. Like, I mean, you still get glare, right, with this one. But, I mean, you get, like, complete glare with the hard lex. And you get none. And this has the clear, so you don't get that blue hue. This has the clear AR on the underside. Just makes the orange, yeah, makes the orange more vivid and makes it um, just pop a little bit more. So that is the 50,000 subscriber giveaway watch. And then hopefully whoever wins it in that 50,000 subscriber giveaway, hopefully they keep it. Uh, J-Rod, good question. Does the AR affect the loom charging? Um, I don't think so, because I think so many watches use AR coating. Maybe it does a little bit, but, I mean, like Breitling and Omega, those guys, they do AR coating on the top and bottom side of the crystal. So they use a ton of it. Uh, let's see. Cowboy Swami says, why wouldn't you keep it for yourself? So... I got an answer for you because that's this one's mine. So, for example, if this one were to get destroyed or lost or something like that, I wouldn't even buy another Orange Monster. It's this Orange Monster that I'm connected to, not Orange Monsters. You know what I mean? So the reason why I wouldn't keep that one, the only reason I would keep that one, it would be like a backup to this one just in case something happened, right? Well, I don't want a backup because if something happens to that, then that, that story ends. It's over. I don't want a replacement for that. That's, that's why I don't want to keep it. Also, I think that's an appropriate 50,000 subscriber giveaway, don't you think? It is an actual orange. You know what I didn't check? I don't know what the uh, second language is for the day. Oh, okay, it's not. I wasn't sure. I never did check. I wasn't sure if it was like Roman or something like that, but it's not. Because I have had, I think I've had one orange monster on here that was the Roman day wheel too. Yeah, and the, Craig's in the comments too. So big thanks to Craig for hooking me up with that. He gave me a really good deal on that, so. Yep, memories, that's what watches are about. For sure. Give away the legend. No, I'm not giving away mine. I'm giving away that one. Uh, El Boogie says, if he doesn't get an orange monster, he's going to get the Doxa 300. So those are the two, right? I mean, I'm sure there's other watches. Heck, there's a really nice orange version of this watch. But when you think orange diver, for most of us that are talking and everything like that is it's the orange monster and it's the doxa probably the doxa 300 those ones are the quintessential orange dive watches i agree scott is asking first watch right he's asking me what watch did i have first um and then he says or maybe for a question for the group mine was the freestyle uh, when i was six I'm from the coast of North Carolina, so they were popular. Yeah, so those freestyle shark watches or whatever, those are super popular. And actually, I need to probably bring a couple of those in and do a video on that because there's some history with that brand owner and stuff like that. Um, but my first watch, man, I'd have to try to think back to my childhood. I don't know that I can vividly remember exactly what my first watch was. I'm pretty sure it was a Swatch, but I don't know which one it was. So I'm thinking it was a Swatch, 
maybe a Timex before that, but I can't vividly remember that. And I can remember the swatch. But there, I mean, the, there was a long time. We were just talking to another group of buddies about this, how long we've been into watches. I, uh, there was a long time I was not wearing watches. Um, it was 2012 is when I really started getting into watches. So it's only been, um, you know, eight, nine years or whatever that I've been kind of into watches. Yeah, when I first started, actually when I really kind of first started getting into watches, even in 2012, it wasn't, it wasn't Seiko's or anything like that. It, it originally had started with Casio. I started getting in with Casio watches. And then it migrated into um, some Seikos. And my first Seiko automatic was actually like a field watch. And then I the second one, the first automatic Seiko diver watch was a SKX-011. So I instantly went to the orange dial. And then I ended up with a monster too. CW says only eight years. It flies by though too. It's pretty crazy at the time. Uh, let's see here. Try to read some comments. My first real watch was an Orion Field Standard. Wow, that's a pretty bold first watch, too. That's cool. Because that's like, that's got some story to it, you know? Uh, let's see. I've had a ton of monsters. I've had a ton of watches, period. Yes, I've had a, a lot of Seiko monsters, but I've owned a lot of watches. I've sold a lot of watches. I've um, handled, I don't even know. I've never kept track. I mean, just the videos alone, I'm sure it's thousands, near 2,000 watches. Um, uh, on top of the fact that I was handling a bunch of watches before I even started the channel. So, I don't know. Yeah, it's a lot of watches. Uh, Eric is asking, do I still have my Tudor Black Bay? No, I sold it to my good friend, Tennessee Mike. And I'm happy that I sold it to him. I'm happy that he has it. And I gave him a good deal, and he loves it. He wears it on the regular. So uh, I'll probably pick up a Tudor Black Bay again later on, maybe. Something. We'll see. It's hard to say. I'm kind of in a no buying phase right now um I'm trying to think of what the last i think this was the last watch i bought and i'm and i'm gonna sell this so let's see jay rather have you ever used a seiko monster as a halloween costume no GTC 77, did I, have I ever wanted a Rolex Submariner? Yes, I have. And there was a couple times I started to go towards buying one and then I just kind of bailed. I don't, I don't really feel the need. I think the only reason I would want a Rolex Submariner is because, I don't know, it's iconic, but I don't want to jump through hoops to get it. So, and it's a lot of money. I don't want to spend 10 grand on a watch, so. Detroit Spartan says, what's up, Rob? What's up, Detroit? William Rizzo's here. Flipper for life, for sure. Still have the North Flag. Nope, the North Flag sold. As soon as it came in, I sold it. Didn't have it very good, uh, very long. Detroit says he's got an AD hookup for me. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not going to buy. I have no intention of buying a Rolex today. Maybe tomorrow. Let's talk tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow. J-Rod, if they come out with a white dial Submariner, I will buy it. If Rolex launched a white dial Submariner tomorrow and for some reason somebody said, hey, Rob, I have a white dial Submariner. Would you like it? I would pay for it. I would buy it. Let's see. Best dive watch under 1,000. Best dive watch under 1,000. Are you saying under a thousand, but close to a thousand? I would probably go Christopher Ward. Chance from the Berg says, "Get the Explorer Two white dial." I almost did that too, and I just I'm not going to. I'm not there yet. Yeah, I'm on a huge white dial kick right now, but I don't. We'll see if that sticks. I don't know if that'll stick or not. 
All right, guys, we're almost at an hour. Is there any last minute questions before I kill the lights and we look at the loom? Because I got to pick this mess up stuff. Yeah, Christopher Ward, if you're going to, if your budget's $1,000, I say go for Christopher Ward. Oh, yeah, the Polar Explorer 2 with an orange Everest brand would look awesome. That would look really good. Uh, Shane says, Rob, what about the Cartier tank? I think those are cool watches. I've actually checked one out in person. I can't, the, the crown, the one I checked out, the crown was so long, it like dug into my hand. Was, there's no way I could wear that. Uh, Stuart says, any discounts for Oris? Yes. Um, I will, Stuart, I'll post something up in the founders group. I'll, I'll talk to um, Richard at Saltzman's and see if I can get you guys a solid discount. Because they're going to be a little uh, spotty all over the place with their discounts. Uh, Rob, how do I get a wrench? <laughs> like one of those titanium wrenches? Um, I, I can get you a wrench. I, I'll do a wrench giveaway. I have a couple of wrenches here. Let's see. El Boogie says, yeah, when 10 grand feels like 100 bucks, that's when I'll get a sub. Yeah, I'm a long ways away from that. So I'm with I feel you on that one. All right, let's 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 kill the lights. Flirting says kill the lights. Let's see the loom. All right, so right away you can see monsters. The the steel dive actually glows great. The Helsin in case you didn't know, Helsin loom is beast. It's overpowered. The Damasco full loom is awesome. This is the first time I've seen these Benz watches with loom. They're loomed out too. They got quite a bit of loom as well. So you got some players here in the loom department. That is for sure. Even the citizens, the brightling. Yeah, everything's glowing here. No one's, sla no one's uh, slacking here. Even the Victorinox is glowing pretty good. So, all right, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next vid. Yeah, the Helsin. The Helsin is overpowered, straight up. There's a reason why a lot of people like those Helsin watches, because they are, like, it's... a an absolute beast in the loom department. So, all right, guys, I'll see you in the next vid.